Item number, SCP-555, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures, SCP-555 is to be placed in a standard containment locker. Corpses are not to be brought within 18 meters of SCP-555, or the room in which it is contained. Note. SCP-555's containment procedures were revised after Incident 555-1. SCP-555 is to be housed in a 5x5x3 five by five by meter concrete containment chamber. Inside the walls, an electromagnetic array with a combined internal field strength of three Teslas or greater is installed. In an interstitial chamber, a set of the most powerful permanent magnet arrays available is to be held away from the electromagnetic array and moved into place by automatic systems in the event of power failure. The chamber is to be separated from the rest of the facility by an exclusion zone of at least 20 meters, due to dangers posed by high magnetic fields and by the SCP itself. No corpses are ever to be brought into the exclusion zone. A HEPA air filtering system is to be installed to avoid fouling of the SCP. SCP-555 is never to be stored in the same site as SCP-447. Description SCP-555 is a metal cylinder with rounded ends, 1.25 cm in diameter and 8 cm long, similar to a magnet commonly fed to cattle to prevent hardware disease. It emits a field of unknown nature, which exerts an attractive force on dead or necrotic human tissue, including hair separated from the body, corpses, shed skin cells, and, in extreme cases, the epidermal layer of the skin. This field does not tend to follow the inverse square law and does not interact with matter or electromagnetic fields in a manner consistent with any known force. The SCP itself appears to be impervious to force, showing no response to focused heating, compression, or striking. The attractive force exerted by the field increases linearly with the amount of dead material in close proximity to the SCP. Past a certain point, measured at approximately 295 kilograms of necrotic material within 2 meters of the SCP, the progression becomes exponential and the field's strength and radius increase rapidly. The field also appears to have an effect on permanent magnets. The field strength of magnets in proximity to SCP-555 decreases over time, with the rate of decrease changing in proportion to SCP-555's field strength. SCP-555 was recovered by agents in 19 in a cemetery in California. The Foundation was alerted to a possible SCP after a coffin due to be buried was pulled from the pallbearer's grip and came to rest above the grave of a who died in 1948 body was turned over to the Foundation Forensic Specialists, who noted that the torso appeared to have been smashed inward, though with no skin damage. The SCP was found inside the corpse's stomach. The corpse was found to have no other anomalous properties and was reinterred. A ground-penetrating radar survey of the cemetery showed that all coffins in a 12-meter radius had been displaced underground towards the site containing the SCP. Addendum Incident Log 555-1 SCP Involved SCP-555 SCP Personnel Involved Data Expunged Doctor Date Expunged Location Expunged Description on a containment breach of SCP caused a security guard to shelter in place in the room containing SCP-555's containment locker, along with two Class D personnel and Dr. One Class D attempted to wrest the guard's firearm from its holster, while the other attempted to strike Dr. The guard shot the first Class D, and the corpse adhered to the outside of the cabinet. The guard then shot the Class D attacking Dr. and his corpse collided with the guard, causing his firearm to discharge. The shot ricocheted off the wall and struck Dr. in the head, killing him.
The security guard was subsequently crushed by Dr. Wang's corpse against the locker containing the SCP, collapsing it and killing him. The SCP's field entered geometric progression and pulled the corpses of a number of personnel killed by SCP through the reinforced concrete walls. Eventually, SCP was contained and the situation with SCP-555 was evaluated. Researchers were unable to determine the exact number of corpses stuck to SCP-555, but 17 personnel, including those in the room with SCP-555, were reported missing after containment had been re-established for SCP. The dead matter had formed an approximate sphere of human tissue around the SCP. A Class D personnel trapped in the hallway at the time of the containment breach had had his legs crushed by SCP and was partially entombed in the sphere. Efforts to free him proved fruitless, and because the field strength of SCP-555 would increase by a massive amount if the Class D died in proximity to the SCP, sufficient to envelop the entire facility, including the morgue. The Foundation was forced to undertake heroic measures to keep him alive. Clotting agents and mechanical ventilation were administered. No opiate painkillers or anesthetics were administered due to the chance of causing the death of the Class D. Ibuprofen, aspirin, and acetaminophen were administered after confirming the Class D's lack of allergies to these, to marginal effect. Muscle paralytic was injected intramuscularly in small doses, and restraints were installed after 35 hours. When the Class D attempted to commit suicide, by slamming his head against the surrounding material, and by attempting to strangle himself. The SCP was moved into a nearby testing chamber, with measures taken to remove any corpse within its affected radius. At this point, a tracheotomy was performed on the Class D, as his screaming was determined to be affecting measurements, and a gag would pose danger of him choking. X-ray tomography indicated that the density of the material adhering to the SCP increased in density with proximity, approaching the density of iron within three inches of the surface of the SCP. The material closest to the SCP was determined to be extremely hot. It would be significantly past its boiling point had the material not been under pressure. Predicted response curves showed that should any significant amount of dead matter be added, the field would extend to the site's morgue. Researchers in proximity to the SCP noted symptoms in themselves commensurate with having a constant mechanical force pulling on their epiderms, and were rotated every three hours to prevent burn-like symptoms. In addition, a small but measurable force on living subjects was detected. Experiments showed that the force increased linearly, as small amounts of dead material were added. A decision was made to remove the dead material as soon as possible. Eventually, it was determined that exposure of the matter to a significantly caustic substance, sufficient to render the material into component simple compounds, would cause it to cease to be attracted by the SCP's field, with a commensurate decrease in field strength and density. Researchers then experimented with small portions of dead human tissue and eventually discovered that magnetic fields of extremely high power would damp the field of the SCP. The SCP was slowly lowered into a high-temperature solution of sodium hydroxide, with the Class D facing upwards to avoid premature death. A heating system was installed once it was determined that the decompression of the by now cooled compressed corpses was causing the solution to freeze. After several hours, the Class D and dead material surrounding the SCP were completely dissolved. SCP-555 was recovered intact, completely unaffected by the compression, heat, or caustic soda. Knowledge gained during these containment efforts led to the creation of SCP-555's current containment procedures. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-554, The Perfect Murder, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.